Hey everybody, welcome back to the workbench and today we're going to be covering more of Blender 3.0 tutorials. What I'm going to specifically cover today is the modifier stack, how it works, how to apply the modifiers and how it orders everything in process. So I want to also add in one thing that some of you may know about, some of you may not know about, which is a little tool that you can add into Blender which makes your modifier stack a whole lot easier to use when you apply everything in order. Let's get started. Okay, so when we open up Blender, we're greeted with our splash screen. I'm gonna turn that off. Now, because I'm gonna be working it in the modifier stack, we don't need our end tabs panel here. So for instance, I could keep my mouse in the 3D viewport, press the end key and that end tabs panel goes away. Remember the end key brings it back, makes it go away. Okay, I'm gonna make the modif or I'm gonna make the side panel here just a little bit bigger so we can see what we're working with. And I'm gonna zoom into my cube just a little bit. Sometimes you can't zoom in all the time. If you ever run into this problem where you use, use your mouse wheel to zoom in and it kind of stops someplace but you want to zoom in a little further, there's a little keyboard shortcut that'll make life easier. Move your mouse over here, press Shift B, and it gives us a box select. So I can grab that, zoom into my box, and now I can zoom further into the box if I want. And I'm just going to zoom in here so we've got the box in the 3D viewport. Okay, so now let's talk about the modifier stack. With the cube selected, and it could be any object that you have, we're going to come over to the modifier stack, which is this little wrench here. So if I click on that little wrench, it brings up our modifier stack. It tells us the object that we're working with, cube 001. And now we can apply modifiers to this, which are temporary modifications to the geometry of our model. Or they could be temporary things like physics applied to it. We could also deform it or uh, other things that we'll do here. And I'm, I'm not gonna cover all these modifiers today. Basically, I just wanna show you the stack, how it works, how things are applied, and a real quick tip to work with it. So let's go ahead and do what most people will do to a cube, which is apply a subdivision surface. I'm gonna come over here to wireframe view so that we can see. This is our cube in wireframe, and you can see all the edges of our cube. If I come over and add in a modifier, I come down to subdivision surface, you can see it changes the geometry of our cube. It kind of rounds it out into an icosphere, um, and now we can make changes to it. For instance, if I bring up the level or the viewport levels here, I can kind of bring that up a little bit, and it kind of rounds things out just a little bit more by adding some geometry to the edges. Okay, so I've got one temporary modifier applied, which is the subdivision, and I'm going to add in another one. Let's just move this up a little bit so we've got some more room to work with. Let's bring this back down to one. Okay, so I brought this back down to my viewport level to one because really the subdivision surface kind of really screws with the geometry a little bit and other modifiers may not work with it. So let's just add in another modifier. I'm going to come over to add and I'm going to add in a bevel modifier. And you can see here in wireframe mode, it adds in some geometry and I can increase the segments of our model and you can see it increases the segment of the particular model. If we look at this in solid view, it gives us a slight bevel here and I can keep increasing the geometry here to round those off just a little bit more. It adds quite a few bevel marks into that. If I want to drop that down to kind of reduce the number of faces here, we can do that. And if you turned on your system stats here, you'll see at the bottom here, I've got the number of faces at 11. Uh, 76 and if I increase the segments you can see it modifies it up to 1538 and accordingly if we decrease it we can bring it down to 866. Okay so I've added the bevel modifier to that we've also got the subdivision surface and these are being processed in order. I'm going to add in one more I'm going to add in a remesh modifier which changes the mesh orientation of our geometry. Uh, let's see here I'll show you and it's easier to show you in wireframe mode if I come down here to add modifier remesh you can see what it does to the modifier or to the geometry it takes each of the other two modifiers and processes a remesh afterwards and we have obviously some control over you know, voxel sharp smooth and we can make you know all kinds of little shapes here i'm just going to keep this on sharp and i'm going to increase this to five and you can see it adds quite a bit of geometry to our model and if we look at that now in solid view you can see what it did to our model now i can go and increase the number of bevels and it slightly changes it. You can decrease that. And then accordingly, you can look at the faces, the tries, and objects here. Uh, we're working with one object, uh, 3,798 faces. It's kind of a high-res high, high res model, but it just shows you what you can do with the modifier stack. Okay, so I'm going to make these a little bit smaller. I'm going to drop them 
uh, hitting a little down arrow. I'm going to make them a little smaller in the modifier stack. The reason you would want to do that is if you have maybe a dozen or so modifiers applied to a particular object, um, it makes just uh, the process of, of viewing these in the modifier tree a whole lot easier. One thing to understand about the modifier stack is that these processes happen in order. So for instance, the way I have them viewed here, the subdivision surface would be applied first, then it would apply the bevel to the model after it's been subdivided, and then the remesh modifier would be applied to uh, these is the last thing here. Uh, once the subdivision and bevel have been applied, it'll do the remesh. You can change the order of these, and if you change the order of these, you may or may not see things change in your geometry. One of the reasons I like to work in wireframe mode is because I can see the changes to the geometry of an object as I'm working with it, because these are temporary. So if I, for instance, want to apply a remesh modifier um, before the bevel, I can come over here and move this up, and it puts it ahead of the bevel but after the subdivision service and now you can see it's changed our model significantly so if i stay in solid view and i move that back down you can see the changes that it makes so for instance if i want to have the remesh done before i do the subdivision i can come over here and now you can see it really looks like a beveled cube there's really nothing applied to it and it's just basically made a beveled cube out of that so i'm going to bring that subdivision surface back to the top now we're looking at this icosphere basically uh, with the remesh applied after the subdivision service and the bevel. For instance, if I also want to take the bevel and move that to the top, I can also do that. Again, it changes the geometry of our model significantly. So these things happen in order. They happen in the order that you stack them in the modifier stack. Now, if I like this model and that's what I want, I can go ahead and apply each of the modifiers individually here. So for instance, if I want to make them permanent, I have to make them permanent by applying them in order that they appear in the stack. So for instance, I'd have to select my subdivision surface, hit this little down arrow, and then I can hit the apply button and apply it. So if I do that, it changes and makes permanent the subdivision service. Then I can come down here and apply the bevel, which will make the bevel changes permanent to the model. And then I can apply the remesh modifier as the last step and make that permanent. Well, that's kind of a three-step process, kind of awkward to work with. So I'm just going to control Z back out of that and make these temporary again. And I'm going to show you this little trick that we can use in Blender by making an add-on that comes with Blender uh, active. Come over to the edit menu, select the preferences down here, move your preferences tab over here. And for instance, here you can see I've got my add-on selected. And if I come over here to this little magnifying glass, which is the search uh, option for the add-ons, I can type in MOD for modifiers. And you can see the second option here is interface modifier tools. Now, I want to expand this, and this basically gives us a brief description, which doesn't really tell us anything. You can come over here and get the documentation or report a bug, and that's typical or common in Blender add-ons. So for instance, now I want to make this active. I'm going to put a little tick mark in this checkbox, and now I've activated this tool. If I come over here to Save Preferences, I've saved that permanently, and if I close the Preferences tab, watch what happens on the right. What happened here is that add-on has been added to our modifier stack, and that gives us four buttons. We can apply all, we can delete all, we can turn the visibility on and off. What that does is it turns the visibility of all these uh, on or off individually by toggling them. So for instance, if I turn everything off, you can see our original model as it was before we applied these temporary modifications. And then if I have viewport viz one more time, it applies them. I can also do something really cool. I can come over here and turn these on and off individually. And what this does is it toggles the viewport changes that we have to our model. Now the little camera here is for rendering. Um, I would leave that there because you probably want to see what these are going to look like when they're rendered. And it's probably just a good idea to keep these ticked on. Now these other ones here allow us to make changes in edit mode and we can also come over here and if we hit tab to go into edit mode you can see it gives us an outline for our original model our original model uh, that has had this particular subdivision surface applied to it so i'm just going to turn that back off and we'll just stick with these they're all active now we can toggle the stack on and off so that uh, it expands 
and contracts each of the modifiers so we can see our settings. Or again, you can just hit the little arrow right here and expand and change any temporary settings you want. But the cool thing about this tool is the first option, the first button here, apply all. Now you saw we had to apply these individually in order to get the results we have in our viewport. However, with the modifiers tool active, I can hit the apply all button with my model selected and boom, it's done. Those changes are made permanent. So that little tool makes life a whole lot easier. Guys, I hope this helped you with understanding a little bit about the modifier stack and turning that tool on. If you didn't know about it, that's a good thing to have turned on. If you do know about it, you've probably been using it for quite a long time as it's been in Blender for many years. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing as I'm going to continue doing these Blender 3.0 tutorials. And we'll be covering a few more of the uh, functions and utilities in Blender before we start modeling, which will be about five or six episodes from now. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button because it helps the algorithm, helps my channel grow a little bit. And that's something you can do to help me. Thanks for watching and have a great day.